Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another Smart Live class. I am your instructor, Neil, for today, but I think we've met before. At least I've met a lot of you. Good, Louise, if you ever, uh, Louise, Louise, uh, or is that, no, I thought that was Lowell's for a second. No, it's Louise, good morning. Hello, Adrash Vandit, Leo, Dieri, Malena, Steve, Nornor, Rosa, both Rosas, Natty. Who else do we have here? Goldie, Abdul Karim, Tan. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. For those of you who watch these videos later, there are live chat rooms. There are real people. That's who I'm talking to. That's why I keep on looking to the side. Alejandro, R. Tepulto, Aziz. It just seems like the, na the names keep growing and growing. The list of names keeps growing and growing with each, uh, every time we do one of these. Tatiana, good morning. Pablo, Good morning, good Aaron. Hello, uh, my apologies to you once again, Aaron. I have to get to uh, Aaron's grading pretty soon. I will do that. I will do that. I tried to get to it this weekend, and it didn't happen as soon as possible. ASAP. I'm going to try again tomorrow. All right, mate. Eric. Uh, maybe we should get to the we should get to the meat and potatoes. By that I mean we should get to why we are here, which is another lesson. Oh, thank you, Adrash. That's very kind of you to say, Aiden. Uh, hello, hello, Azerbaijan. Yeah, Leo. Good use of the uh, Oxford comma there. Schunst uh, Machen. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, Amanda. It's morning here. It's 7.30 a.m. in beautiful downtown Spokane, Washington. It's, uh, what is it, uh, 17.30? Is that even close? 5.30 Greenwich Mean Time? I can't remember when we do these. It's too early. It's too early to talk about time. Okay, let's get to it. Um, oh, I should share the link with you, shouldn't I? Okay, let me go all the way down and grab the link. Uh, we're doing vocabulary uh, this morning and vocabulary related to work. Rather than start with the A's, I think I'll, about, I'll start halfway through with the I's. I'm going to grab the link and share it with you. If you see that link in the chat room, that's a link to the class notes that I will sometimes have behind me here. Hello. There's a greetings from Turkey. Hello, uh, Baris, Baris. Good, or good afternoon or good evening. Griga, Griga, uh, I welcome Mars. I welcome our Martian visitors. Hello, Mars. What time is it on Mars? Uh, hello. Dijma from Mongolia. And again, if I mispronounce your name, try to find a way to correct me. Uh, I, will, I will mispronounce names. Okay, if you have any questions about Smart Live classes, you can email Zach at Zach at SmartEnglish.com. That's S-M-R-T English.com. More information about the Smart Life classes are on this link here. We have four of them with a subscription, and a subscription gives you access to the Smart Curriculum. We have a page about the school where we work, the physical school where we work, which is the Spokane College of English Language. So if you want more information about that, click on that link. We do have a Facebook group. It is Learn English on Facebook with Smart. If you haven't joined already, please do so. And then finally, anytime you want to see an old video, they're all archived on our YouTube channel. If you need to contact me, uh, there's my email there. Uh, it's not family life today. It is work. Our vocabulary today is about work. 
Okay, uh, Bharat, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, welcome, India. Uh, English, English today, it is vocabulary about work. Vocabulary about work. Whew, let me take a breath there. Okay, I'm going to begin with the eyes. So the first word I'm going to begin with is insist. I'm about halfway down the vocabulary list. The first word today, insist. It's a verb. Even though it looked fake, she insisted that her bag was really a Louis Vuitton. Even though it looked fake, she insisted that her bag was really a Louis Vuitton. So no matter what anybody else said, she insisted. Insist is where you state very strongly, no, and in this case, whoever's defending her bag would say, no, it is a Louis Vuitton. No, I'm not wrong, you're wrong, it is a Louis Vuitton. So insist is a very strong statement hard to push somebody to change somebody's mind when they insist when they insist yeah they're keeping on their minds they've got what we call a one track mind a one track mind i'll actually add that that's big let me make those fonts a little smaller a one track mind uh, that would be a noun. Can only think about one thing. Can only think one way. So people who have a one-track mind insist, insist, yes, to be stubborn about something. And that's right, Louise. Uh, this is about, this fake is counterfeit. This would be a counterfeit bag. Yeah, make a strong sand, stand. Have no doubt. William Wilson, it's going great. We are talking about vocabulary, starting with the verb insist. Yes, that's another good, Louise, that's another good phrase. S stick to your guns. Stick to your guns. Um, uh, stay with your opinion. Yes, that's right, Rosa. That's a great example sentence. Leo keeps insisting that one day he is going to shoot the sheriff. Boy, when we did that Bob Marley song, I think that really stuck with Leo. He insists. Leo keeps insisting that one day he is going to shoot the sheriff. He keeps saying it again and again and again. And yes, and even though we know he isn't, he insists that he is. Uh, Barat, you're asking the difference between making learning fun, make learning fun, or making fun learning. Barat, the first two, making learning fun, is okay to say. Or make learning fun is okay. But the last one, you can't say making fun learning. That one's a little strange. And I'll add those to my notes. Sorry, my mouse is not being very cooperative. So, uh... We say make learning fun. The teacher makes learning fun. So you kind of need that verb gerund and then adjective. You need it in that form. Uh, it's pronounced, is there a synonym for insist? Uh, Aaron, I don't think there's a uh, pronounced. Pronounced is more, it's an adjective. Uh, 
pronounces either the way you say something or something that's very easy to see. Pronounced is, um, can be a verb or can be an adjective. The way you say something or um, something very noticeable. Uh, so pronounced, like you can pronounce very strongly about something and in that case you insist it. Adrash, that word you're asking me, I don't know. I don't know what a philatelist is. I have no idea. You ask me a word, I do not know. Good, Thushara, that's a good example sentence. I insist you study much harder. I insist you study much harder. Adrash accommodating is a gerund and therefore a noun. All gerunds are nouns. It could also be an adjective. It could also be a continuous or progressive verb. It could be all three. Those ing words are tricky. They fall into a lot of parts of speech. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, Fatih, we, we have only talked about the first word, only the first word. So second word, interfere, verb. I think the walls are interfering with the wireless internet signal. I think the walls are interfering with the wireless internet signal. Obviously by this sentence, you can tell that interfere or interfering means interrupting, stopping, making something more difficult. Uh, stopping the normal function or work of something. Hi Chandra. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, and so, it's like when you're trying to get work done maybe at the library, let's say for example you're at the library and the person next to you keeps on answering their phone and talking loudly with somebody, they are interfering with your work. While you're trying to read something or do homework, they're interfering. Uh, interfere, bothering, in, uh, stopping, uh, stopping the normal work function of something. El Salvador, the topic we're talking about, vocabulary, vocabulary related to work. Rosa, that's a good sentence. Trump hates when journalists interfere with his speech. Yes, he doesn't like that. It, it's, it bothers him. It interferes him. Yes, Thushar, a good example sentence. Do not interfere in my business. You shouldn't, yes, Milena, you shouldn't interfere in other people's business. Uh, that's a good question, Dijma. What is the difference between interfere and interrupt? Uh, interfere, oh boy, now I have to think. Interfere is uh, you are stopping somebody or something from working effectively working smoothly, interrupt is when you see something going on, especially a conversation, and you join in halfway through, even though you know the other person is not done speaking yet, you interrupt them, you interrupt them, you stop somebody, usually we use with you stop somebody from speaking. And I believe that's our next verb. Please turn off your cell phones. I do not want anything to interrupt our class today. So as the teacher is teaching a lesson, as the students are working, please, no cell phones going off, no cell phones ringing. That would interrupt us. That would stop uh, conversation. That would stop our thinking. 
Could you use these as synonyms? Yes, you could easily use these as synonyms. Let's call interfere and interrupt synonyms. They're very, very much the same. I think, yeah, yeah, I would say same, same. Uh, we use interrupt a lot more with conversation. Uh, <laughs> Adrash, that hasn't been proven yet, or has it? Uh, I won't interfere with your plans. Uh, can we replace interfere with prevent? Um, sometimes, Barris, sometimes we could. Um, he was interfering with my work. He was preventing me from working. I think with prevent, you would most often need the prepositions from, prevent from, as in you're preventing somebody from doing something. It is like stop something. Um, Adrash prevent is, is different, but it can sometimes be used in the same way. Inter Barat, the word interface, is um, interface like when you use a computer all the all the things you see on your desktop that's your interface that's your graphical interface you can interface you can interact you can do stuff with your computer by clicking on the icons like the folder icons the browser icon that's called an interface. It's something that allows you to communicate with your computer. So interface is a way to communicate and we use it most often with computers. English, my job will interfere with my studies. I certainly understand that. Uh, Rosa uh, Vivek isn't here to interrupt us with his love examples. No, Vivek isn't here to interrupt us with his sentences about love. That's correct. Uh, during the 80s, uh, this is Venchi, during the uh, 80s, nobody managed to interfere with Madonna being number one in the world. I think she was the top selling artist in the 80s. Yeah, Leo, interfere, this word, uh, we can use, we can turn it to the noun interference, interference. And we can use for waves, for uh, wireless signals, for radio waves, uh, for television signals, we can use interference. If uh, something mechanical is not working correctly, if it's trying to retrieve a broadcast signal and it cannot, yeah, something's being interfered with. Rosa, you say interfere looks more academic. Yeah, I would say interfere is not used as much as interrupt is. Uh, interrupt is more common. El Salvador, go, good example sentence. I don't want to interrupt your breakfast. Diary interfere being nosy? Yeah, sometimes if somebody interferes with you, they're being nosy. They're asking too many questions. Okay, let's go on. Oh, uh, Vensi, you meant Maradona, not Madonna. Yeah, they're, they're kind of the same, similar. Uh, invest, verb. The entrepreneur is looking for people to invest in her company. The entrepreneur is looking for people to invest in her company. Uh, invest. You want somebody to put money down in the hopes that the company will make money and you can give them more money back. Invest. It's kind of a it's kind of a gamble. It's in business when you put you give money to a company uh, and as that company grows, so does the return uh, the return on the money you may get back, if that makes any any sense. Yes, to inject money, to to put money on something with the hopes of getting more money. Invest, invest. I don't know if any of you have invested in business 
or invested in stocks, invest. Yes, put down money in the hopes of gaining more money. Uh, Vivek, I love to interrupt her, but she doesn't know that it is a kind of love. I'm sorry, Vivek, I'm sorry your, uh, <laughs> your heartbreak continues. But yes, that's a good sentence. That's a good example sentence. Uh, Natty, you're, you're sorry to interrupt me, but you're wondering if I shared class notes. I did. If I need to share them again, I can go grab them. Okay, hold on. My uh, mouse is not working quite correctly, so I have to scroll. I can only move this document with the scroll wheel. Here I go all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna grab the class notes. It's okay to interrupt if you need the class notes. There they are one more time in uh, the chat room. Uh, through Shara, we would use the preposition in. I invested in shares in the company. Alejandro, I'm afraid of investing money in stocks. Me too. Rosa, you are investing your time to learn English. That's a good use of the word invest. It doesn't have to be about companies and money. It can be about how you spend your time, how you invest your time. Uh, very good. Sway, good. Uh, hello, welcome. Uh, we're talking vocabulary. Uh, El Salvador, uh, it's used in not just a, a laboral environment, uh, not with just company and businesses. You can talk about investing your time. You can talk about investing your energy in something. Uh, it's where you put something in the hopes of gaining something back. So. If you invest your time learning English, hopefully the return is that your English improves. I hope that you are finding that. Sway, uh, we're about, I don't know, 22 minutes in, and we are only on the, is this the fifth word? Fifth word? Uh, laborer, laborer. That's kind of hard to say. Try saying that out loud at home on the train, somewhere, wherever you are, at the cafe, laborer, laborer, laborer. Kind of sounds a little strange, laborer. Notice in the US, we do not use the U. We do not use the extra U, the superfluous U, the unnecessary U. US spelling L-A-B-O-R-E-R. -E and isn't that an easier spelling? Isn't that a nicer spelling? The carpenter employs three laborers in his company. Workers, it's just a fancy word for workers and we use it for manual workers, people who work with their hands. So we say manual, manual workers, people who work with their hands. Yeah, a working person, usually uh, a harder job, not I guess you could call a desk job, you could call that person a laborer, but we use it more often with physical work, with physical work. Yeah, it's just synonym for worker. That one's easy. Laborer, the only thing hard about it is how you say it, laborer, laborer. May the first is workers day where laborers celebrate, May Day. Okay, here we go, right next. Oh, what is the difference between a lumberjack and a carpenter? A lumberjack, a lumberjack cuts down trees. A carpenter shapes wood or how about uses wood to build, uh, build things, houses, furniture. A carpenter assembles wood into new things like houses and furniture. 
a lumberjack cuts down trees. Yes, labor is just one factor of overall production. Uh, oh, why don't, why don't we say the U? Why don't we use the U? Uh, a lot of words in British English that have this U, like color, uh, the British spell it C-O-L-O-U-R. Uh, they use the U, and somehow in American spelling, we dropped those U's. I don't know why. I can't explain that. I don't know. I, I could do research. I could see when that happened, why that became the fashion to spell in the U.S. to drop a lot of those U's. I don't know, uh, to, to be honest with you. I should, I'll look that up. Yes, blue collar workers. Uh, I think even in British, you wouldn't say the U either. I don't think they'd say laborer. I think they'd still say it laborer. Still say it the same way. Okay, enough about laborers. Lack, a verb. That city really lacks character. It seemed really boring to me. That city really lacks character. It seemed really boring to me. I'm sorry if this is a picture of your city used as an example in this, but as you see, many of the buildings look the same. Not a lot of variety in architecture or color. So it lacks character. It lacks character. There are no round forms. There are no round buildings. There are no domes. There's no colors. There's no spires. There's no pointy buildings. It lacks character. We would say it lacks character. There's nothing to make it unique or noticeable or interesting or fun. It lacks character. Yes, Thushara, lacking experience may cause a lot of damage. Uh, Dapu, that's another good example. On or and on or. Larissa, I'm not sure. Could you ask your question again, Larissa? I wasn't sure what you're asking. An anti, an anti panour? What is that? Uh, can, you, can you check the spelling of that? Yes, we like, I, I, I suppose we uh, like the short forms of words. The shorter, the better. Uh, let's see. Um, yes, <laughs> Adrash, a sadist lacks humanity. A sadist lacks humanity. Somebody who enjoys pain, giving pain, lacks humanity for sure. Yes, Rosa, a few minutes ago we were lacking Vivex love examples. Uh, El Salvador, you are suffering from a lack of of money. You lack money. I also lack money. I, I also suffer from that. I lack sleep. I lack sleep. Uh, does E and is that a Sway is asking is E and then E with the umlauts, the double dots above it? Do they sound the same? No, they don't sound the same. In English, we don't have, we don't use umlauted letters. Uh, we don't put any uh, accent marks when we spell words, even though we may pronounce an accent, we don't put any accent marks above our letters, but they are said differently. It'd be like E and I, kind of that would be the difference, but no umlauts in English. Let's see the next one. Lift verb. Could you help me lift this table? Actually, in the background, we see the noun form of lift. We see a ski lift because it lifts the skiers to the top of the mountain. But lift is a verb just means pick up off the ground. That's an easy one. Pick up off the ground. Uh, since we're talking about the difference between Britain and America, uh, in uh, England, in Britain, they call an elevator a lift. 
and of course we call it an elevator. We call lifts elevators, they call elevators lifts. It just picks something off of the ground. Ahmed, it's okay, you're late. We got, we're about halfway through class. We've only covered a few words, only about seven words so far. Yeah, I'm gonna lift the bed. Please help me lift the couch. I need to vacuum underneath it. Lift, lift. And of course, if you have a question and I don't get to it, please try asking again. Because sometimes when I look and then I look back here and I look back here, I lose the question. Yeah, Tom lifted this stone. Yeah, pick up off the ground lift. Minority group as a noun. Politicians need to get votes from minority groups. They want to win elections. Minority group is just a name for anybody who is outside of the majority for any reason. It's not necessarily race. Oftentimes we apply the word minority to race, but what it means is the smaller number of people rather than the larger number of people, a minority group. <laughs> Leo, can we say? Uh, I would say, slang-wise, we would say, give a lift. Can you give me a lift means, can you give me a car ride? I think the slang version would be, uh, can you give me a lift? Can I give you a lift? I gave a lift to my friend. Uh, I gave a lift to a stranger off the street, which is always dangerous. Don't do that. Uh, Yes, I need to lift my GPA. Yeah, sure, we can use it for a number. Yeah, I need to lift my GPA. That's good, Ahmed. Oh, did I make a, I make a, a, a mistake? Uh, Rosa, you say Hispanics aren't a minority group in the USA. I think Hispanics are, would be considered a minority group when compared to people of English-speaking ancestry. Uh, Hispanics are people of Spanish-speaking ancestry. Uh, it's hard to say. In some areas of the U.S., they are not a minority group. I would say in California, they are not a minority group. They're a, a very large group, and their numbers grow every day. I think if you took the entire United States, uh, they would still be a minority group, although you know, they're so large, it'd be strange to call them a minority group. Uh, but I think still considered, especially for the purposes of voting and elections, they're probably still a minority group. Good, Adrash. The minorities protested for egalitarianism in society. Don't we wish society was more egalitarian. Don't we wish it was more equal? Yes, Native Americans are a minority group in the USA. Uh, they make up a very small fraction for being the first people in the United States, before it was the United States, before it was America, when it was just this piece of land, they were uh, the first people here, now they make up a very small amount of the population of the United States. They are a minority group now. What is this mistake of the week? Is that something, what is mistake of the week? Is that something you guys have come up with? Do I usually make, yes, at least one mistake a week, if not more. But who, yeah, are you guys keeping track? Let me know, let me know if I make the mistake of the week. I'd like to know. Okay. Needle, noun. Some people are really afraid of needles. And here we see a needle and a thread that you would use for sewing, sewing like clothes or cloth. Uh, when we say some people are really afraid of needles, I think most people are thinking of doctors, going to the doctors and getting a shot with a hypodermic needle. I think that's what people are afraid of. 
Is there an adjective form of minority? There is. Minor, M-I-N-O-R. The adjective form of minority is minor. Uh, so small, minor means meaning small. Let's see. Uh, 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 mm. Okay. Yes, a needle has a sharp edge. Good. Needle is just an object. It can be this thing you use to sew. It can be what the doctor uses to either put something in you or withdraw something like blood out of you. Needle. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh, Sean gives you a mistake of the week to solve. A mistake of the week. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know Sean's mistake of the week. Uh, you'll have to tell me more or give me an example of a mistake of the week. Okay. Noteworthy. Adjective. Noteworthy. One word. Noteworthy. England is famous for producing several noteworthy musicians. Noteworthy is something that you notice, something that is remarkable, something that is different something that is seems to take on a special importance noteworthy uh, 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 uh yeah we just use needles to sew cloths patients are afraid of needles cuz doctors inject them with the needles England is famous for producing several noteworthy musicians. Good, yes, <laughs> Vinci, uh, in Rambo, Rambo sewed himself up with a needle. He sewed up his wounds with a needle. He did it himself. Uh, noteworthy is just something you would take notice of something that's like it basically means something that you should write down so you can remember it and we use it for uh, we use it for people we use it for things for events for shows we just feel it's noteworthy it's uh it's worth remembering it's worth remembering thank you Thushara uh, it's a very it's a very uh, complimentary sentence Neil is a noteworthy teacher in the world. I feel like it. I, I feel like I'm teaching around the world. Uh, oh, okay. So, Sean, so you guys are telling me about Sean's mistake of the week. He gives you a sentence with a mistake, and then you have to guess. Uh, Ali, noteworthy means uh, you should remember it. Somebody or something you should remember. There's something special about it. So, for example, this sentence, English, England is famous for producing several noteworthy musicians. Uh, I can think of some uh, English musicians like Eric Clapton would be noteworthy for his guitar playing, for example, for just one example. Uh, antonym, okay, that's a good question, Adrash. What would the antonym of noteworthy be? Maybe, um, n oh boy, nondescript. I'll write that in. Nondescript. Uh, boring. Plain. Uninteresting. Those would be antonyms of noteworthy. Boring, plain, uninteresting, nondescript. Yes, un <laughs> unnoteworthy. Uh, so uh, you guys are telling me about Sean's mistake of the week. Does he just write it? Uh, does he put it up behind him or write it in the the chat? I can write. I can write a sentence with a mistake in the chat. Um,
Okay, here's an easy one. It's a grammar mistake. Actually, there's two mistakes. I gave you a sentence with two mistakes. It's a grammar mistake and another type of mistake. It's in the chat room. Okay, let's look at the next one. Personnel. Personnel. Noun. The security personnel all wear jackets with yellow lettering. Yes, good. In my sentence, there's a missing comma. Uh, Milena, no, I don't need an extra preposition. It's either the comma's missing or the word was. Yes, verb tense. So either I would have to change both verbs to past tense or both verbs to present tense. Yeah, and the comma, and I'm missing a comma. Oh, you guys are good. You guys are fast. Diary, I think you were the first with the verb tense, and Rosa, you were the first noticing the comma. Good job, guys. Good job. Okay. Uh, if you would like me to incorporate more of that, I, I certainly, I certainly could. Uh, okay. Personnel. The security personnel all wear jackets with yellow lettering. Uh, personnel is kind of like staff. Uh, yeah, staff. The people who work the job. These are security personnel. It's like a fancy word for staff, for workers of a certain place and position. Personnel. Okay. Uh, hello, Indonesia. We've got about 20 minutes left. Proposal. Noun. I presented my company's proposal to the CEO. I presented my company's proposal to the CEO. So company's proposal would be, this is what I would like to do next. This is the new thing I would like to do. I propose our company do this thing. Um, okay, so Leo, uh, let's go back. Uh, this word personnel is different than personal. Personnel is different than personal. Personal is spelled differently. So personnel is different than personal. You can have a personal account in the bank and you would be helped by the personnel in the bank to open up a personal account. Personnel, personal. I wanted to open up a personal bank account. Fortunately, the personnel at the bank were able to help me. Uh, El Salvador, you propose that uh, you, I propose that you make a treat. I don't know if the other person would be for that proposal. Uh, proposal is like suggestion. Uh, proposal is like suggestion. Uh, yes, of course, proposal also means uh, when you ask somebody to marry you. That is also a proposal, a marriage proposal. I suggest that we get married. That's a marriage proposal. It's just a suggestion. The other person can say no. The other person can say no. It's just a suggestion. Uh, that's right, Leo. Personnel is like employees. Uh, Vivek, I don't think we can use it that way. I don't think we can use... <laughs> I propose... Uh, I propose to... I propose that we have a drink. You could say that. Okay, uh, let's next. Raise, sa as in salary. I asked my employer for a raise, but she refused. Well, that's bad. Uh, raise, 
raise your salary. Raise is when you get an increase in the amount of money you make. If you do, you get a raise. You get a raise. Uh, so, uh, yeah, raise. I think you've, have you all heard this one before? Just means an increase in salary, a raise. Kareem, you say, yesterday I proposed to my girlfriend to marry her. I proposed marriage to my girlfriend. Hopefully, your girlfriend said yes. <laughs> yes, I think Vivek has made a lot of different proposals to women. Uh, good, Sway. We can also use raise to mean bring up children, to help children grow parents raise their children. Hopefully, parents raise their children to be good people. Yes, you can have your wage raised. You can have your salary raised. More money. More money. Uh, also good. Uh, Lokesh, raise your hand. In class all the time, the teacher may ask, okay, raise your hand if you know the answer. Yes, raise a child. Raise your salary. Raise your hand. Just means lift up, bring up, get higher, increase. Raise and rise. Uh, the sun rises in the morning. Rise is slowly. Uh, and rise cannot be used as a noun. Rise would be the verb. Raise can be used as a noun. It can also be used as a verb, but raise can be a noun or a verb. Rise is only a verb. And it means like, wake up, get up slowly, rise. And rise and lift. Uh, I would say, I'm going to lift the table, but I would never say ever say, I'm going to rise the table, or I'm going to raise the table. I'm going to use my physical effort to pick it up off the ground. I am going to lift it, not raise or rise it. Raise or rise would be more natural. Uh, doesn't take physical force to make it go up. Um, how do the usage of raise and salary vary? Um, they're just saying in this uh, parentheses here, salary, Raise, they're giving us the word raise as it applies to salaries. As it applies to salaries. El Salvador, your example sentence, Christ raised in the third day, we would actually say Christ rose, past of rise, rose on the third day. That's good. Thank you, Louise. There's the difference. Raise it can take a direct object. It is a transitive verb. Rise is an intransitive verb. Thank you, Louise. I'm glad you were in the chat room. So raise can take an object. I want to raise my grade, uh, but we can't say I want to rise my grade. We can't say this. I want to rise the sun. No, we can't say that. The sun rises. So a transitive verb and an intransitive verb. Raise can take an object. Reasonable, reasonable, adjective. You will find the prices at that restaurant are quite reasonable. You will find the prices at that restaurant quite reasonable. That's why I always go there. Reasonable is agreeable, logical, uh, not asking for a lot. Uh, just enough, just enough, reasonable. Uh, so you would say, if somebody said, you will find the prices at that restaurant quite reasonable, uh, they're good, good prices, low prices, affordable prices. What they're asking for, for the price of food and drink, seems fair according to market value. It's reasonable, it's re acceptable. Good, Rosa. That's another good example sentence for raise. Don't raise your voice when you talk to me. Yes, there will be 
uh, uh, there will be a raise in temperature. Uh, I guess you could say that. Um, we usually use rise with temperature. The temperature will rise next week. And I guess you could say there will be a raise in the temperature. Actually, there, uh, and, and you just proved me, you just proved me wrong, Kareem. You could say, uh, we do use rise as a noun. There will be a rise in the temperature next week. So with temperature, just with temperature, we use rise as a noun. But I think that's only with temperature. Yes, we have to make a reasonable adjustment. Uh, Anik, you would not say the view of the sun rose. You would just say the sun itself rose. The sun rose early this morning. Vivek, you, good. I'm glad you have a reasonable nature. Anybody should be able to accept your nature if it's very reasonable. Uh, Thushara, so we said transitive and intransitive. Maybe that's worth exploring a little bit. Since we're talking about vocabulary, and vocabulary often contains verbs, there, you can divide verbs into two different categories. You can say, uh, with verbs, you can say they are either transitive, and transitive means can be followed by an object. And we can say verbs are also intransitive. And that just means cannot be followed by an object. So for example, I can say if I blew my nose, that's like when you take a tissue and you uh, breathe into it very hard to clear out your nose. I blew my nose into the tissue. We cannot say I sneezed my nose. So sneeze is intransitive. Sneeze is intransitive. Blue is transitive. We can follow with an object. We can follow with a noun. And here the noun, my nose. Sneeze, though, we can't do this. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. Because the verb sneeze is intransitive. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's a reasonable expl explanation of transitive and intransitive. And those are two words we use with verbs. Leo, to answer your question, no, that is not reasonable. That's not a reasonable political proposal. Usually we say, yeah, decisions are reasonable. Prices are reasonable. People are reasonable. Uh, Adrash, is that correct? What a quixotic, reasonable plan. I would put reasonable first. What a reasonable, quixotic plan. Good use of the word quixotic. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, is there a question? I mi if there's a question out there, I missed it. Receptionist. Receptionist. Noun. Could you make an appointment to meet with my receptionist? Could you make an appointment to meet with my receptionist? A receptionist is somebody who works at a desk uh, and they help people find where they need to go or who they need to talk to. A receptionist answer fo answers phones. A receptionist works at a desk and helps people with information, with questions they may have. They're called receptionists. They receive people and help them locate the information or the people or the areas they need to find. That is a receptionist. Yeah, 
uh, quix, yeah, quixotic, quixotic. Good luck with that uh, pronunciation. Anik, are ducks reasonable? I don't know if ducks are reasonable. I, I haven't talked to many ducks lately. I suppose if they're just swimming in a pond, that's reasonable. Uh, yes, Leo, a receptionist is like a clerk. Um, Leo, I eat a cake is transitive because the verb eat can always be followed. You can always say what you are eating. We just consider it, consider it a transitive verb. Whether you put something after it or not does not change whether it's a transitive verb. It's only if you can, if that verb is able to have an object, is it transitive. Yes, receptionists must be polite. They should be polite. Hopefully, if you have to talk to a receptionist, they will be very polite and reasonable with you. Uh, yeah, eventually uh, you use the word sensible as in sensible explanation. Sensible is a synonym for reasonable. Before I met him, I handed over the paper to the receptionist. Good, Lokesh. A receptionist is my teacher, really? Are you being taught by a receptionist? That's a strange class. Adrash, yesterday I saw an ascetic receptionist. Very good. You're using some tough words here. Quixotic, ascetic, and that's hard to say too. Yesterday I saw an ascetic receptionist. Oh, a reasonable and rational. Uh, Nora, you're asking the difference between reasonable and rational. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, rational, they can be used as synonyms, but rational is more thinking slowly and clearly, thinking logically, uh, that's a rational answer, that's a rational explanation. That's like the most logical answer or explanation. Reasonable is something people can agree on. Reasonable is more a matter of opinion and rational would be more a matter of uh, like clear thinking, uh, informed thinking. Uh, rational, I would say, is based more on information and thought and reasonable more on opinion and feeling. If one person may think the prices at a restaurant are unreasonable, where another person might find them reasonable according to their different budgets. So reasonable more about uh, opinion and feeling, rational more about thought and information. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Sway, uh, Mark no longer has a class, but Sean's class is on Friday. Tomorrow is uh, Josh's class. So Tuesday, Abby, Wednesday, me, Thursday, Josh, and Friday, Sean. Let's see what we have next. Regional, regional, adjective. The regional manager of the bank is on holiday for two weeks. Regional means in the area, uh, locally, close by. The regional manager of the bank is on holiday for two weeks. So the area manager who just works in one area, one o location, regional manager. Uh, the next class, I believe Josh's class is at the same time. Are we all 1530 Greenwich Mean Time? Uh, let me look that up. Uh, doo -doo -doo. 1530 Greenwich Mean Time. Sean is on Fridays at 17 Greenwich Mean Time. I'm 1530 Greenwich Mean Time. Josh is 1530 Greenwich Mean Time. So same time as I'm teaching now, Josh will be teaching tomorrow. Uh, Larissa, uh, transitive and intransitive verbs. This will be the last thing I say. Uh, so transitive verbs. Um, let's see if I can think of another one. Oh, 
Okay, I raised my grade, I raised my grade. Only one of these, and in fact, I used the wrong past tense. I rose my grade, I raised my grade. This one is incorrect. Incorrect. Rose or rise is an intransitive verb means you can't follow it with a noun. You cannot have that verb cannot have an object following it in a sentence. I raised my grade is correct because raise is a transitive verb. It can have an object following it. So I can put this noun, my grade after it. And that's okay. So transitive and intransitive verbs are just two categories of verbs and the verb will always be transitive or the verb will always be intransitive. So I rose my grade versus I raised my grade. One sentence is correct because it is transitive. That verb always will be able to take an object I rose my grade incorrect. That verb will never be able to take an object afterwards. And you kind of have to learn verb by verb by verb which ones are transitive and intransitive, which ones can take objects and which ones can't. But once you know that verb is always like that. Verbs don't change if they're transitive or intransitive. So a transitive verb would be eat. I eat a cake. What do I eat? A cake. So it's a transitive verb can take an object. Uh, eat is always transitive. I eat apples. I eat cereal. I ate breakfast. I will eat dinner later today. Always transitive. I can always put an object after the verb eat, ate, will eat, am eating, any form, have eaten, any form can take an object afterwards. Eat will always be a transitive verb. All right. Um, yes, Bharat, rise. There is no external influence. It just does it on its own. The sun rises. It just does it on its own. There no people need to, we don't need to physically exert ourselves to make the sun rise. Yes, a rational person has very clear thoughts, thinks very clearly, very rationally. Yeah, state verbs, usually state verbs, well, so, yeah, it depends, depends on the state verb. I won't make a, a bold statement about the transitive or intransitive nature of state verbs. Uh, B, if you use, if your main verb is B, that's intransitive. You can say, I am tall, I am smart, I am a teacher, uh, but wait a minute, didn't I just put an object? I am a teacher. Actually, that's called a subject complement, which is something different. Uh, B is a tough one. Uh, maybe next time we'll look at more transitive or intransitive, and I do have to say maybe next time, because I've run out of time already. Time flies when you're having fun. Time flies when I'm speaking uh, to smart students like you from around the world. Smart students, English learners, friends. Anytime I'm in this class, the time goes by so fast. Uh, I am glad that you joined me this morning. Hopefully I got to as many questions as possible. Uh, if you have any more, look at the class notes, look at the links. Uh, send me, send me some questions via email. I don't know when I'll get to them, hopefully soon. Hopefully I'll have a day to check, go through and answer those questions. So you guys have a nice day, have a nice week. Please join Josh's class tomorrow at the same time. Join as many of these smart classes as you can. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye bye everybody, bye bye, stay tuned for a quick word from Sean. Hi everyone, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our channel. Also, 
If you want the full experience of being a student in a smart live class with things like homework and teacher feedback, follow the link and become a premium subscriber. Also, if you want to see more videos from this class, check out our playlist.